Chapter 3, Lesson 2 video on least squares regression. And really all we're doing is building upon what we've already learned in Lesson 1. Um, really, everybody did an awesome job with correlation in Lesson 1. We're getting a little more detailed, uh, talking about the error in our least squares regression line. And um, this guiding question here, which is how can we follow a pattern from a data set in order to predict other values? Now, what I want to preface this with is the idea that really there is no accurate way to predict a lot of things. We've gotten better predicting the weather. That being said, we're still very poor at it. Nobody predicts the stock market well. Um, with that being such a complex yet human-made beast of a system that really extrapolation, especially predicting beyond where our range of values are or where our range of explanatory value values are, um, isn't accurate. So we're going to look at this of predictions, but that being said, that doesn't mean we're fortune tellers. Oftentimes predictions are wrong because there are such a multitude of explanatory variables that go into any, any occurrence of a single event. So that being said, our, our regression line, which you may have heard uh, called the best fit line, we graphed these before in the last class. So we use these lines to predict values of y for a given x. So given an x, what will y be based on the data we already have? So our prediction will be called y hat. That's how we'll read it, y with this little hat on top. <coughs> it's the predicted value of the response variable for um, y for any given value of the explanatory variable x. Uh, b will be our slope. That's the slope of our regression line. And a is the y-intercept, as we talked about in the previous class. The slope of the line, this is a common misconception down here, it does not determine the strength of the relationship. It simply lets you know how much x, x values affect our predicted y values. Uh, we could have a weak correlation and a strong sl uh, steep slope. So the slope just tells you about the regression line, not the strength of the relationship between the explanatory and the response variable. So keep that in mind. So we could have a small slope and a strong correlation, or we could have a weak correlation and a strong slope, or a Strong slope, strong correlation, weak slope, weak correlation. Slope, correlation, not the same. So when we're predicting for values outside of the range of valuables we have on the x-axis, so if we're going like outside of a thousand here, um, that's called extrapolation. And extrapolation is oftentimes unpredictable. And for a variety of reasons, one being that we don't know how the relationship changes outside of this. So a relationship could seem linear, and then when we get to further values, it might curve down and never hit the x-axis because having a value of y that's zero is not re realistic, depending on what it is. So, so we have to look at the reality of our regression line and how far we could extrapolate, and then also understand that even if it's realistic to extrapolate with it, it might not still apply because the relationship might change when we get to a certain point for any number of reasons. So that's just being just just saying that extrapolating is dangerous beyond our given range of data. And and really the reasons why it's dangerous vary from every type of situation, from situation to situation, depending on what we're looking at. Now a residual, this is incredibly important. So right now, pay close attention. The residual is of a point is the actual minus the predicted. The way I want you to remember this is A minus P. A, P, A, P. We're in AP class, AP stats, actual minus predicted, A, P. So the residual is actual Y value. That means the actual data we gather minus the predicted Y or Y hat, meaning what's predicted by the line. So it really it's the distance between the line and the point in the vertical direction and that's our residual. So the residual of any given point is the distance in the vertical direction between the line, the regression line, and the point. So the further it is, so an outlier would have a high residual because it, like an outlier up here would be very far from our, our regression line. Um, values close to the line, like right here, have very small residuals. Remember, we only care about the vertical direction because that's where our prediction is. The x is what we're plugging in to get that prediction. So um, the least squares regression line, the goal of it, so we call it the least squares regression line of y on x, is the line that makes the sum of the squared residuals as small as possible. So notice how it's squared residuals. Just like standard deviation, we square them. We don't care about whether they're below it or above it. 
we just want the sum of that to be the smallest. We want the distance from every point to the line to be the smallest in the y direction. So really when we look at residuals and our least squared regression line, there are a lot of similarities between it and what a mean and standard deviation is. You can think of the line as the mean or the average of all the data points and the standard deviation to be the distance from the average distance from each data point to the line. And with r, when that value is smaller, r gets stronger. So in this case, closer to negative 1. If we had an uphill slope, closer to positive 1. So here's a nice visual of what we're talking about. We minimize the squared residuals. So notice the line in bold is the vertical distance from the line to the point. And the square would be, you know, squaring that value, multiplying that by its same value and this area representing that value. So we want to make these squares the smallest possible. The residuals in bold. And we square that. And remember, we're squaring it because we're not concerned with uh, whether it's above or below. We just want to have the minimal distance. So if we didn't square it, the, the values above and below would average out to zero. So what we're looking at is this, like the absolute value, which is another way to look at this. Uh, we want the distance between the line and the point to, in the vertical direction to be the smallest possible. So when we look at the equation of the least squares regression line, here it gets a little more complicated. We're looking for any explanatory variable y for n number of individuals, the number of individual data points or whatever collecting values about. So calculate the means of all the x's, so x bar for all the values of x, and y bar means the average of all the y values and the standard deviation of each of those values. Uh, so we could do uh, stat calc one variable stats for L1 being x and L2 being all the y values and then find both of these var variables. And if you wanted to calculate the slope of a line it would be the r, the coefficient, times the standard deviation of y over the standard deviation of x. The y-intercept would be a, remember we're doing linreg A plus BX, where A is our y-intercept and B is our slope. So A would be the average Y value minus the slope, which is calculated here, times the average X value. And that would give us our, our equation for the least squares regression line. Now these are given on your formula sheet. However, you should understand how to interpret them. And that we will have a couple questions on these. Although, for me, the more important portion is how to interpret our values and look at the overall pattern in the data. Okay, here it gets a little more complicated. A residual plot is plotting all the residuals that we got. So if you imagine when we went up to the residuals, remember that's the distance between, in the vertical direction, between a least squares regression line and the actual data points, just in the vertical direction, meaning it's a difference between the y-coordinates. Then we use the same values of x and the, and the residual, meaning the difference, how far it is from the regression line. This is a residual plot. So when you look at a value here, close to 400, and then find the same value here, being below the x-axis shows us that this point over here is below the least squares regression line. So you plot, instead of plotting the x and y coordinate, you plot the x coordinate, which is about 3... 80, let's say maybe 385, and then you plot the difference between the actual value minus the predicted. So here actual minus predicted, the predicted is bigger, so we get a negative value. So here for 385, we have a negative residual, meaning our value here is below the least squares regression line. So I've included on this uh, web page for you guys uh, also a video of the calculator functions and how to do a residual plot. So we, in last class, we did the least squares regression, and we plotted the y by saving it into y, y1. And then our next step is adding the residual plot, um, another calculator function. So I made a video so that it would help you with all these calculator functions. So keep in mind that the residual is the difference in the actual value. So here's my actual, the point, the actual y value minus the predicted. So because the actual is smaller than the predicted, this is a negative residual, and we see the corresponding point there. So pause the video and say, where would this point be? It's at x equals 415 about. Well, if we look here, the actual value is less than the predicted. I mean, sorry, actual value is greater than the predicted, so we have a positive residual that corresponds to this point up here. 
So the x value is the same, and the, now the y coordinate is the difference in the actual minus predicted. So that right there is a large residual. If our residual plot um, shows no obvious pattern, then our association is linear. If we start to see a curved pattern in the residual plot, then we know that the uh, pattern between the explanatory and the response is not linear, meaning it could be, um, could be um, a curve of some sort, a parabolic function of some sort. So the sh residual should be somewhat small in size if our regression, regression model fits the data well. If our residuals are large, then we have a, tend to have a lower R value. Standard deviation of the residuals is the sum of the residuals squared over n minus 2, square root of the whole thing. So S tells us how big are the standard error of our residuals. R squared is known as the coefficient of determination. Literally, you take the R value we found in our calculation and square it. It tells us how well our regression line fits the data. It's also 1 minus the sum of all the residuals squared and divided by the sum of all the y, y values minus their averages squared. So this is like the um, sum of the squared residuals. And that's where we get r squared. So we'll talk about how to address r squared as it relates clearly to r. So it tells us how well, um, how strongly data is correlated. So um, explanatory and res response variables is key for regression, knowing which may cause the other. Um, switching them doesn't affect the value of R, but can show us a general over our overall pattern. We only make the distance short in the Y direction because we're only concerned about our predictions when we have a least squared regression line. If we review, if excuse me, if we reverse the two variables, we get a different least squares regression line, but R would not be different. So think about switching the values of the two variable variables. The least squares regression line would be different. However, the correlation wouldn't. So correlation and regression lines describe linear relationships. So remember, th the correlation R and R squared can help us with the direction and strength of the relationship. But as far as the form and any potential outliers, we always have to plot our data. So every time you do this for a quiz, a test, for, and if you do this in real life, which I hope you do, always plot your data, calculate R and R squared, when you will do this for your project, So and then look at the scatter plot, look at the regression line up on top of it and then also look at the R and R squared. So outliers are incredibly influential observations so an outlier can uh, weaken our correlation quite a bit, change our regression line quite a bit. So points that are outliers, what we do of, oftentimes is plot, um, we calculate all these things with the outlier and then also without because we can get information from them. Outliers can be extremely rich and helpful but they can also deter if there's some error that caused them and let us not know about the relationship. So we have to look strongly at them. That's why repetition of experiments is important because if we have an outlier once, maybe we may not get it again. Maybe we will and then we know that there's something valuable there. Maybe there's some scientific principle, something changes that we don't, we're not accounting for in the original model. Um, so any observation we call influential for a statistical problem, if removing it would would significantly change the result of the calculation. So an outlier, we remove it, R goes way up, so we'd call that influential. Um, especially if it's far from the regression line, then it's more influential. So points that are outliers in the x direction of a scatter plot are often influential for the least squares regression line. Um, and another key that, just like we saw where more AP calculus caused, not caused, but um, correlated with more global, a higher global warming, global temperature, um, that's not causation. So there could be strong association and no causation. So correlation could be a first step, and then scientific reasoning and other things have to be taken into account. So pause now for your multiple choice. You're saying which one of the regression lines has the smallest residual. Remember AP, AP class, actual minus predicted. So look at these five answer choices and answer that question. Please also read the summary for Chapter 3, Lesson 2, look through the examples, and then read over the outline in Schoology as well as the vocabulary, and then answer this guiding question, how can we follow a pattern from a data set in order to predict other values? So what are the tools we have, especially those mentioned in this lesson?